uh, headed up um, San Pedro northbound, and then we made a right eastbound on to Evergreen. And I saw the two guys, and uh, I told Miguel, "Whoa, whoa, check it out!" And Miguel saw it right away. We get out. The uh, second gentleman that was with him and ended up shooting both of us. On June 29th, uh, 2017, I was on patrol when I heard over the police radio uh, that two officers had been shot. I was inside the office when we heard Julio uh, get on the air. Uh, shots fired, shots fired. I was in shock. I, all these emotions like denial, anger. I was horrified. Um, hoping for the best, hoping that they both were going to be okay. Uh, it, it just makes like everything just stops. Time just kind of slows down. It was just devastating to the entire department, to the city. just added to the devastation of, of that day that it happened so close to uh, to Detective Marconi. You know, lightning lightning doesn't strike twice in the same place. And and for and for us on that day it did. Our family's been through a lot this year and we we all miss them dearly and it's you know, we we just that's the way we honor him now. Just we think about him, we talk about him. He had a great personality. He's a, a, a friendly guy, uh, easygoing, uh, a good cop. He always sat in the same spot. He was always smiling and not really talking because he's not. He was not a talker. He was kind. Of, everyone knew him. Everyone loved him. But he was, you know, he was just always smiling. If you were having a bad day, he was. Good, he was a good guy to hang out with. He was like the person to hang out with because he's gonna lift you up. Quiet warrior. He, he was quiet, smart. He was the type of guy that he didn't say a whole lot, but when he did, it was either really, really funny or he was really serious and you paid attention to it. That roll call, he always should shoot out those one-liners. If you ever been at our roll call, you understand somebody makes something and next thing somebody throws out a, a, a one or two liner, it pops up. And Miguel was good for that. I remember walking down the hall one day, coming to roll call and, uh, I see Miguel coming in, in, in regular clothes. And I remember looking at my watch and thinking, he only has five minutes till roll call. And as we passed, he smiles, I smile. And I tell him, you're gonna be late. And he says, no, and he smiled and he kept going. And before the sergeants and lieutenant came in, he comes walking in, sits down, fully clothed in his uniform, ready to go. And I looked over at him and he looked at me with a big smile. It was just, you know, it was always that smile. He always had, he always had that smile. One night after our shift, we went to the locker room and I asked him, hey Mo, if I buy you lunch, man, can you please just show me some moves? He took me up in the offer and so we started dancing side by side. And then he was in front of me and going through some steps. So I told him, you know, hey bro, I, I need to get a feel for it. And he's like, what do you mean? Like, I want to partner up. So he hesitated, but he was like, oh, whatever, because that's how Mo was. So we like start partner dancing and like waltzing, two-stepping, whatever it was called through the, through, the, through the locker room. And as we made our way to the front of the locker room, the door opens up and a, a guy walks in and he's like, oh, I'm sorry, did I interrupt something? And both of us, of course, were embarrassed. And Miguel was like, oh, like he has his long fingers and he's really quirky. and. Nobody wanted this. It wasn't supposed to be like this. I miss my brother every day. When I go to work, when I work, I'm going home, I just think about him. I'm not the only one that lost. Miguel's family isn't the only people that lost. His, his outside family, his family in blue, his co-workers, the community lost. Not just a 
police officer, but a wonderful human being. On behalf of my family and myself, we appreciate everything tremendously. There's no words I can describe to all the support, help, prayers. My sister wrote this. She, she wanted me to share it. Not a day goes by, we don't remember Miguel. Although it's been very painful for us to attend all these events that honor him, it shows us how much everyone appreciates Miguel. As the day gets closer to hitting a year and days get heavier and emotional, all we can do is talk about him and share our stories with our families and friends. That's the way we honor him every day. This here is uh, Miguel's honor chair. Uh, it's generally the area where he sat uh, during roll call, uh, usually along this, this wall here. And uh, we have it here just to, as a honor and a remembrance of him uh, being here always with us at roll call and just here at work, uh, just to keep his memory and honor alive. And that way we can see it every time we come in and just reminds us that, that we're always with him. I actually sit right here and I look to my right and I see his chair and his pictures. And I mean, he's such a quiet guy. He touched a lot of lives. Miguel had something really amazing about him and something that I miss, that we all miss as a shift. He was such a good guy. He was a great cop. Good person, but a really, really great cop. Hard working, dedicated to the job and to the citizens. And so it just, a piece of you is gone. To us, Miguel is always with us. He's always here in our spirit and in our hearts. With Central B, we all lost and we all miss him. And we all knew him more than just badge 1603. We knew him as Miguel Moreno III, Mo. Every day we come to roll call and there's no way we can forget, never. But, you know, we have his chair and we have his badge and it's all over. Even if we tried to, even if this stuff wasn't here, we would never forget him.